Greetings Team World. I wanted to create a quick demonstration video of the Ceph test bench. In particular, we're talking about the object functions. Uh, and, it, and you can see that Ceph starts with uh, some addresses and test transaction IDs already here. So we'll start with this one. Uh, and first off, we'll uh, just uh, take a look at this one. We'll, we'll, we'll use the get address function, which will show all transactions associated. You can see there's multiple transactions found. This is all on Bitcoin testnet. Uh, and the first one here is a transaction that uh, created an object. Uh, cool. Uh, and you can see another one that was uh, a transaction that uh, gave this object to somebody. Uh, and you can kind of see through the keywords here who they were sent to, but it is kind of uh, hard to tell. What else we've got? Have we got? We've got uh, MB. This one. This one is another given, but someone actually used the ASCII text keyword MB. So that's interesting. Let's do a search for that keyword MB. And you can do a free text search up to 20 characters. Uh, and let's we'll have to use this by keyword. If you try uh, to get the address MB, it's going to say, well, that's not a valid Bitcoin address. But if you use this by keyword, it's going to go out and try to find anything uh, associated with this keyword on the Bitcoin testnet. So we're doing that now. And it's returning over 8 megabytes, uh, almost 8 megabytes worth of data it found uh, in 115 transactions. And it took uh, almost 3 seconds for it to return. Cool. Well. So one of these transactions, probably the very last one here, yeah, all right, the one before the last, is most likely, yeah, the exact same transaction. So this is the transaction that it's discovering when you say uh, by keyword here, when it returns the, uh, boom, when it returns this back in three seconds. Uh, it found this one, and it did some, it did some things to ver validate that uh, it was an object, and then it returned it. All right, cool. So let's grab this object again, and let's look at it further. Get the object. So you can see it has a process height of three. So that means it actually processed through four transactions, and this is its current state. And if you'd like to get more info on the transaction, uh, make sure that the verbose checkbox is checked. And then when you get the object with the verbose checkbox checked, it's going to give you more detail about what actually happens. So we'll uh, take the same address up here, and we'll, we're going to be going into the event level DB table, and we'll get it. And all right, cool. You can see then that there is multiple transactions that uh, or came that came through that were successful. You had uh, the transactions that created the object, an object lock, and uh, several give transactions. Awesome. This is kind of similar to what you would see in the history uh, or the activity screen if you went on to like a traditional trading site, this type of history. This would show all the burns. Uh, also, when we introduced the LST transaction, the list, and also the buy transaction, the UI transactions, they'd also show up in here. Cool. So uh, we've got get objects. Uh, get owned. Let's try that. So this one will go out and find anything, uh, any objects that this particular address owns. And since this address uh, created the object, it does still have 97 of, of them available. Cool. Uh, there's other ones here. Uh, let's check. This address is just another owner that it found. We'll just place them in here and say, uh, let's find the ones that this one owns. And it returns the same one because they're on the list. There's also now the get uh, ones that are created. So since I put in 836, so you can see this one is an owner, but they didn't create something. Uh, we'll use the, we'll try to search for get created, and nothing comes back. We'll go back to get owned. We'll get someone from this created list here, plop them in here. We'll say get created for you, and then yes, it does come back as created. So the created will show you know every object. Uh, anyone who is defined as a creator during the, the object creation will return uh, in, uh, when you search for them this way. Uh, anyone who currently is on this owner's list will be, will be returned. But you see you have a creator here who doesn't currently have anything. 
So what happens if we search for them? Get owned. It still returns. And that's returning because the, the creators, everyone, anyone in the creator list has shared access to the uh, any of the uh, objects that were uh, that uh, that the object itself owns. This address here is the object's address. So the object has 97. So all creators have access to this. So this creator technically do, does still own 97 of this object, although their address isn't showing in the owners list. And it, it does that, that type of logic uh, for you when it's doing these searches. Uh, I think that's a pretty good demonstration of what can be done uh, with uh, uh, things you can be testing for in the uh, object area here. Cool. Have a great day.